trillion liquidation UK jobs at risk as May refuses to use taxpayer cash to save firm. Around 20,000 jobs are at risk after bosses at the stricken firm said they had no choice but to take steps to enter into compulsory liquidation with immediate effect. Carillion is one of the biggest companies in Britain and is a key supplier to the government as well as having major contracts in the rail industry, education and NHS but has struggled since reporting half-year losses of £1.15 billion. The group had racked up £900 million of debt and a £590 million pension deficit and saw its share price plunge more than 70% in the past six months after making a string of profit warnings and breaching its financial governance. Executives met lenders HSBC, Barclays, Santander and Royal Bank of Scotland last week to discuss options for reducing debts, recapitalise or shoring up the group's balance sheet. But crunch talks over the weekend failed to result in the short-term financial support it needed to continue trading while any deal was reached. Philip Green, chairman of Carillion, said, This is a very sad day for Carillion, for our colleagues, suppliers and customers that we have been proud to serve over many years. Over recent months huge efforts have been made to restructure Carillion to deliver its sustainable future and the board is very grateful for the huge efforts made by Keith Cochran our executive team and many others who have worked tirelessly over this period. In recent days however we have been unable to secure the funding to support our business plan and it is therefore with the deepest regret that we have arrived at this decision. We understand that in government will be providing the necessary funding required by the official receiver to maintain the public services carried on by Carillion staff, subcontractors and suppliers. The government had come under pressure to intervene to prevent the collapse of the company which is heavily involved with a number of key infrastructure projects including the new HS2 train line. The company's failure has raised questions about how the situation was allowed to become so serious and the United Union called for an inquiry into the crisis. Tory chairwoman of the Commons Treasury Committee Nikki Morgan, a former cabinet minister, said the situation raised serious concerns. She said, there is the immediate issue about if something happens and the plug is pulled what's going to happen to the delivery of the contracts? Of course, there will be questions to be asked. Whether it's my select committee, or the public accounts committee who will be asking very searching questions of ministers about who knew what and when. The company has public sector or public, private partnership contracts worth £1.7 billion, including providing school dinners cleaning and catering at NHS hospitals, construction work on rail projects such as HS2 and maintaining 50,000 army base homes for the Ministry of Defence. As a result, the government has been under increasing pressure to intervene to prevent the collapse of the company. Unions are calling for urgent reassurances over the jobs, pay and pensions of thousands of workers following the disastrous news. Officials from several unions representing workers on the railways, construction sites, prisons, hospitals and schools are seeking information from the company and ministers. Rail, Maritime and Transport Union General Secretary Mick Cash said, This is disastrous news for the workforce and disastrous news for transport and public services in Britain. We have been warning since Thursday night that we thought the collapse of the company was imminent. The blame for this lies squarely with the government who are obsessed with outsourcing key works to these high-risk, private enterprises. RMT will be demanding urgent meetings with Network Rail and the train companies today with the objective of protecting our members' jobs and pensions. The infrastructure and support works must be immediately taken in-house with the workforce protected. Transport Secretary Chris Grayling and his Tory colleagues must be forced to take responsibility for this crisis which is wholly of their making.